Hi once again. Uh, this is episode number 817 and the topic today is um, back in the dating arena. I've been, off, I've been off doing more of a spiritual self-support type thing for the last week or so but I want to come back to a dating question from a friend of mine that basically inspired this talk which is basically um, you can still be soft and feminine and protect yourself while you're dating. That's, that's kind of how I wrote it. Before I jump into the topic at hand, let me introduce myself and explain what it's all about so you know why you want to watch, and we'll get into the topic at hand. My name is Barry Selby, in case you haven't already figured that out. My name is Summer in this broadcast, and I am an inspirational speaker, a love and relationships expert, as well as being a spiritual guide, and I'm also the best-selling author, or I should say the author of the best-selling book, let's get that reversed, 50 Ways to Love Your Lover, a book for singles and couples, men and women. I'm a passionate champion of the Divine Feminine, which is why I help women create balance and love life and business, and also why I do these talks every day for over two and a half years now called Messages for the Masculine Inspiring and Feminine Heart. So today we're episode number 817, is that what I said? I think I said 17. Anyway, it's up there. <laughs> and, sorry, sorry, my teeth, that was annoying. Um, the topic today, again, is about, for you ladies, how it's okay to be soft and feminine and also be able to be safe, safe, and protecting yourself in the dating arena. And this again is from a, a question a friend of mine posed to me that I answered um, in texting, but I want to talk about it here because I'm sure she's not the only one dealing with this. So let me explain a couple of things and frame this first before I jump into the second part. Because for some women, the term femininity and being feminine is unfortunately too constricted with the feminist movement, which I'm not talking about. So let me break this apart. The feminist movement was a very activist-driven organization that came out of the sexual revolution to get women's rights and get women back in equality, which is what's still going on. That's one part of the conversation. But in this topic, I'm talking about women being in their femininity or in their feminine heart, their feminine strength. Because I firmly believe, when I said in my introduction, I'm a passionate champion of the divine feminine, I know some stuff about this, that when women are in their true feminine, they're actually more powerful than men in their masculine are. And that's sometimes a challenging topic to bring up and certainly can upset some people because they're going, no, no, men are stronger than women. It's like, you don't know the half of it. Anyway, that's again a sidebar. So let me come back to, I keep, I keep like chopping away at the thesis to get back to the topic. So ladies, when you have become, when, when you have done the work to become more feminine, because a lot of women haven't been naturally that way. So presuming you've come to that point where you've actually been on, starting to honor, own and respect yourself in your feminine heart, sidebar a second I said before many times how I talk about the business world was created by men for men and women have been trying to fit in ever since for most women that's one of the challenges that women have been women have chosen have been forced to have, have ended up being like men in the business world which means when they come back home and become like themselves they've not been necessarily able to access their feminine so I'm speaking that if you've understood there is a difference between masculine and feminine and being in the business world is not how you date and in fact, how you're in the business world, you may have to put on a shell or a mask of masculinity to get things done. But when you come back to yourself, you can drop that and come back to your feminine. Then you start learning the power and the gifts and the joy of being in your feminine. I'm not going to break down the teachings of how that works. I talked about that before. And if you want to find out more, you can reach out to me and I'll give you some guidance. But once you've got to that point of being in your feminine, for a lot of women, it's rediscovering a level of softness and comfort that maybe they've lost touch with over many years. That state, that feeling, that beingness of owning your feminine is a powerful place to be, but it also sometimes feels deceptive because it seems so natural and so flowing and so easy and graceful and all these different things which don't appear to be powerful. Which is why the question my friend had was about going out in the dating world and meeting men about how to maintain that without being taken advantage of or how to be mistreated or how to be respected. This is the thing about the feminine. I explain using this um, allegory, I guess. Metaphor? Allegory, not metaphor. I'm trying to get my English skills back. <laughs> that one of my teachers talked about how when a woman is in a true feminine and she wants to be in a relationship, what she really wants to be is in a relationship with a masculine man who owns his heart, his power, and his strength in a, in a heart centered, service oriented way. That's a sh that, this is a very abbreviated description, by the way. So what, what happens for a woman is that she's in a deep place of yearning, but it's not neediness, it's different. And a woman in her feminine is yearning for a masculine man 
who will who can respect her and take her at the same time but it's done from a really honoring place and i'm playing nuance here so let me see if i can break it down the way so what so what the, my mentor talked about is how women in their feminine who are looking for a relationship come from this deep place of yearning that is almost painful because they know just how many men are out there who don't fit that paradigm that's one of the problems by the way so what happens is that she is out in the world maybe she's in the supermarket and she's doing grocery shopping that deep yearning is within her and maybe it's coming out through her eyes and her energy and basically a lot of men are going to pay attention to that a lot of men are going to be like whoa what's going on the thing about it is this woman who's in a feminine is not a waif or a weakling or a damsel in distress far from it a woman in a feminine is way more powerful as i said than the masculine generally is but when she's in the place of yearning it can appear that she's not and this is the thing when a woman is in her yearning place for calling forward the masculine man that she really wants to be with she does it from a place where she has this incredible vulnerability available to the right man and any other man who tends to step in front of that um i'll say almost say like in front of that beam that laser beam is gonna be cut down the way I described it was, and the way my mentor talks about it, it's almost she carries this massive sword that will cut a man in two who doesn't honor and respect her. Because as much as she's in a vulnerable, soft space, she's exceedingly powerful and doesn't take anything, or doesn't, does really, doesn't take any man into her heart who doesn't earn the right to be there. So that's part of the relationship components. So in the dating arena, just to put that into another level, is it's... It, the dating arena has always, and I've talked to this before too, has always been the sense of kind of the chasing and being chased, that the man's got to pursue and be on the hunt, and the woman's going to be his prey, he's going to be the target. The thing about this conversation is that might still play out in the dating arena, and it can play out when it's done the right way, because the thing about it, as I said it before, is the honoring and, honoring and respect that's required. Yes, a man can be um, chasing the woman, hunting her, pursuing her, wanting to be with her, but just because he can do that does not give him the right to have her. This is the thing. Ladies, your power is in the ability for you to choose for yourself. And it's not necessarily about the man who's the best at chasing you. It's the man who you feel most aligned to your energy, who's really in his masculine heart, who honors and respects you. I was talking about... So, sorry, back a second. So, so I'm jumping ahead to something else. Let me come back to this point first. So for women... Sometimes they feel like they're going to throw themselves at a man or be so available, they're going to be so easily taken. It's like, not so. So I'm looking at a, a story over here and I haven't found out how to get from here to there. So let me see if I can bridge that. <laughs> this is the funny, the funny of these talks. They come up with sometimes with three or four things happening at once and it needs to download. So that may not come in. Okay, let's stay, stay, stay to this one. So the power of your feminine heart has the discernment and the qualification to be a very fierce gatekeeper to access to you. So as vulnerable and as soft and as gentle as you may feel at times in your feminine, it's, it's the sense that if a man were to, were to step on that, to be that arrogant, to be pushing and taking, trying to take charge because he thinks he's going to dominate you, without permission, he has no right. Without permission, he has no chance. Without permission, he will suffer the consequences of your wrath. I hope that's clear enough. A man who is owned the right because he lives in his heart, his masculine, who betroths his heart to yours, I don't mean marriage, but betroths his calling to yours to serve and to inspire and to lift you up as well, with permission can dominate, but you let him do that. He doesn't do it without your permission. So those of you who are still dealing with past wounds or bad relationships with abuse or, or even rape or are assault level things that are negative, I'm not talking about that at all. And in fact, if you're still dealing with that, I recommend you get support, counsel, guidance to heal those wounds because that'll get in the way of your next relationship. Unfortunately, those pain wounds, as I talked about last week, I did a talk about how time doesn't heal all wounds when it comes to emotional wounds, time just numbs them. So if you haven't done the work to heal and resolve your past wounds emotionally from sexual abuse or assault or even rape or something that extreme, time didn't heal those. It may numb them so you don't feel them, but any relationship you get into, the, the more intimate it gets, the deeper it gets, that pain's going to come up to be dealt with. 
So I'm saying that to say, when you're single, is a good time to work through that that stuff. So when you go out and dating, you're not carrying that um, wound with you, and you're free to be yourself and open and vulnerable and strong at the same time. I didn't plan on going there, but that's where it went. So the teaching I want to give you to make sure you get this point is that in the dating arena, and I make this simple to make it really easy, in the dating arena when whether it's dating apps or matchmakers or blind dates or social engagements, when a man when a man and a woman meet up, yes, as a woman, you can show interest in him, but don't do his job for him and don't let him have anything more than he deserves and earns to be with you. Your power is in the discernment and the choice. The truth is very clear that a man does not have a right to do anything without your permission. I hope this is clear. Um... No, it's still not fitting. Okay, uh, there's <laughs> there's a story from my past that I shared with my friend um, that I felt belonged to, but it doesn't seem to fit, so I'm not putting it in right now. So you stay over there. Okay. Um, so <laughs> so to make this really really simple, I don't want to make that part simple. But here's the thing I want to say, ladies, if you are not yet understanding what the feminine expression is, the feminine magnificence, the feminine um, embodiment it's something that I have deep reverence for it's the, it's the reason why I do my work is why I've said at the beginning of this talk that I'm a passionate champion of the divine feminine and why I do these talks of messages from the masculine to inspire the feminine heart you get the theme here I'm an, a devotee of and a servant to and a deep respect of the feminine in women it makes my work very fulfilling and challenging at times because when I'm around women who I can see they have a feminine heart but they protect it so much because they've been in the masculine world I feel saddened because I see the power they have but it's been suppressed because they put on a male or masculine shell or a mask to survive in the world as I mentioned earlier in the business world women have basically been trying to fit into what was a, a world created by men for men and it's not been easy and I applaud you women for taking the charge to get out and make some differences and become entrepreneurs or working in the corporate world or whatever you've done and made money and been successful. But that way of being for most women has been too much in the masculine side of the equation and not back in their feminine. Now, sidebar slightly, I'm speaking in general terms here because not all women are naturally feminine. Some women are naturally masculine. And I'm speaking heterosexually here, by the way. This also works in, in gay relationships too, but non-binary is not part of my context or understanding, so I can't speak to that. At the same time, masculine men, sorry, um, men are not all, men are generally speaking, their natural resource state, which is behind all the masks and the shells, is masculine. This is the part of the stuff I learned back in 2007, and it changed my life. A lot of men, though, have lost track of that. I did too. I was so far out of alignment with that. Now the story comes in. <laughs> I knew it would come in eventually. So I spent the majority of my earlier life, 20s and 30s especially, and some of my 40s, totally out of alignment with my masculine. And so when I was in a relationship, I would date women who were mas more masculine than I was. And you may have been a woman like that, or you may have been a man who was in the same boat as I was, depending on, what, depending on which one of you are watching this. So my teaching point here, well, let me tell the story. I look back now and see so many clues, so many massive spotlights pointing at my life, showing where I was out of alignment with my masculine. In fact, as I shared the story with my friend, so here we go, we're going to talk about it. Uh, it was actually when I just turned 21. I was living in Hamburg, Germany at the time. <clears throat> and I was out with some friends. We were going out drinking, came home one night, kind of, kind of had a few more than we planned. And this friend of theirs, this beautiful blonde Brunhilde, this beautiful German blonde woman tanned very sexy woman came on came on to me and she was all over me basically it was a fantasy come true but it wasn't lying to my heart i knew did i, I knew without knowing <clears throat> and i judged myself accordingly though that i couldn't function physically with her I couldn't function sexually i was turned off it was everything i wanted and i knew it wasn't because I, I wasn't thinking like oh, i must be gay or something i went this isn't right it doesn't feel right i found out actually afterwards in the next morning actually from their friends that she damn I always remember her name I think I, I think I don't remember her name damn I was 21 this is a long time ago now <clears throat> anyway she basically had um, been 
getting horny because a boyfriend who was in the military was out of town and was coming back like in a few days. So I think I dodged a bullet, frankly, in that experience. But the reality was looking back now is that I realized back at that point is that I wasn't willing to dance in that sort of paradigm where she took charge and ran as a masculine woman, even though she's in a very sexy woman's body, she was running her masculine completely and steam and basically was steamrolling me and it wasn't working for me. So I turned off. Unfortunately, a lot of my relationships after that point were actually in the same vibe, although not as extreme. So I fell for them. I fell for women who basically came onto me a lot of times and was out of alignment with my masculine. I was around women who were more masculine than I was because they were wired again for the business world to be in their masculine getting things done. And I, because I didn't know how to take that place on myself because I didn't learn this until 2007, to be honest, to be transparent, I was basically defaulting into a feminine role. I didn't claim that, I didn't own it, I didn't take it on intentionally, but I was defaulting because they were taking up the masculine. And because in polarity of chemistry of sex, let me break that one down, sex is based on chemistry usually. The polarity is what fires up the chemistry, which is why chemistry can be restored. I've done a Facebook Live about that too. And the polarity is the masculine feminine extremists of energy, which is true in straight or gay relationships. It's not about gender, this is polarity, different. Which is why it can be fluid in, in relationships with men and women too. So I wasn't in my masculine, but because she occupied the masculine space, I'm thinking of two relationships, relationships in particular, three relationships in particular, with occupied the masculine space, I couldn't, and I wasn't, I wasn't not so much, a, at that time I couldn't, and I wouldn't. So I stayed in the other subject, ended up being the feminine. And in fact, the last one of those three relationships was so obvious, she asked me out, and she had, I mean, she was very, she was very attractive, but she was also very boyish in her, she was petite, short blonde hair that was very close cropped, and she was flat, she was, she was, what, she had a boyish figure, she was flat chested. If I didn't get the clue then, <laughs> I was in trouble. Thankfully, she gave me the clues during our relationship. So, long story short, my journey through that, that, that circuitous route got me to the place where I discovered, thankfully, because I asked Spirit for clear guidance, what the masculine feminine polarity was. And when I understood that and knew where I lived in that naturally, once I dropped my shells and masks, which I put on to be nice and be softer and be gentler, not realizing it was from the wrong place inside, I started to come back to the masculine heart. And from that place, I started seeing women in their feminine for the first, probably the first time in my life. And I was in deep reverence and respect of that because it changed my life completely, which is why I do the work I do. All that to say that many men are out of alignment with their masculine because the world has not shown men how to be masculine. They've just taught men how to be macho. And macho and masculine are two different things in my book. The macho is egocentric, as I've said before. It's not heart-based. It's not service-based. It's me, I'm taking what I want and screw you. And ladies, you may have dated men like that. That sort of man is not a man who deserves your feminine heart. A man who is in his masculine, which is different from macho, as I said, who is driven by something bigger than himself because masculine is a purpose-driven being. The masculine is a purpose-driven um, polarity as a singular focus because the masculine is more linear, less diverse than the feminine. I'm giving, you a lot of broad, I'm giving you a lot of bits and pieces of a much broader topic, so bear with me in this explaining it. So in relationships, when you're in a your feminine heart, ladies, owning your feminine space requires that a man must step into his masculine to one being polar opposite, to be that polarity extreme, ex extreme, to create the chemistry for sexual connection. But the thing is sometimes, ladies, when you're in your feminine, excuse me, when you're not in your feminine, when you're actually in your softer sense, but not actually in your feminine, you might fall prey to a man who's not in his masculine. That's what I'm saying. Own your feminine space. Really live in it, honor it, respect it, because that will guide you clearly. Never guide you wrong. So when you meet a man who's not in his masculine, you know that, and you go, mm, no, thank you. When you meet a man who's masculine, who really owns and honors that, you'll feel it, you'll know it. In fact, it's almost kind of like seeing a searchlight land on him and go, this is the one you can tell. I'm not saying it's the one for you, but this is one of the men who represent masculine heart, excuse me, masculinity and heartfelt purpose fully. You'll know that's a man you want to play with or at least get to know better. I gotta be careful I frame that. I'm not talking about soulmates and the one I'm talking about this paradigm. So to bring this home, when you're in your feminine heart, ladies, when you're really in your feminine heart, what resonates for you as a man in his masculine heart because it's that, that um, well, like poles of a magnet. North and South Pole are attracted to each other. North and North Poles don't attract. The South, South, South and South Poles don't attract. So when you're in your opposites, you become very attracted to each other. 
That's how you can tell when a man is masculine. And it's not about how many muscles he has, or how tall he is, or how big, is, or, or how, how nice a car he drives. It's an inner quality, and, excuse me, an, in, an inner quality, not inequality, an inner quality that you'll be able to feel. And you'll know it intuitively, and you'll know it instinctively, and you'll get a yes inside yourself. This is a man you can trust. There's a few of us out here. There are a lot of men who are not there yet. And waking up to this and, and elevating to that is a whole other conversation. But I wanted to drop this teaching out there because there are many women out there who are actually in their feminine now and really owning their power and not finding the men they want to be with. Here's the thing. Please do not settle for less than you deserve. The power you have, the power you wield, will draw to you men in the masculine. And ideally, as you represent feminine sisterhood, women together, you'll draw more women to you. And that will actually catalyze men to step into their masculine. At least that's my belief. When men don't get what they want because you're too powerful for them, they realize they may have to take another path, which is they need to find their way back to their true power too in their masculine hearts. That's part of what I'm glad to see is happening more and more. But ladies, in this case, you lead. I think this made some sense. Um, boy, I didn't, that's everything I want to say, I think. Let me just see if there's anything else. Whilst I'm thinking about that, a um, couple of things. I'm going to put a couple of links in the comments because I always do that. Um, three links in particular come to mind. One is that for ladies, especially if you're looking for some clarity and some understanding how to do work with this, I'll leave a link in the comments for a discovery session with me so we can talk. It's a complimentary gift from me to you. I'll also put in the comments my book because I did talk about that at the beginning. I always do. So my book's out there as a, as a self-promotion. <laughs> 50 Ways to Love Your Lover. It's a great book and I'm biased. And thirdly, I'll put in the comments my self-love practice. It's my guided meditation practice that I provide that has two audio, um, an AM and a PM, quick but deep guided meditations with a, work, with a workbook or a guidebook as well. Um, it's on my website, you can buy it and use it yourself. Great thing to do for 30 days to change your life. So those three things, links will be in the comments. Um, I think that's everything I wanna talk about this piece. I appreciate my friend who was the one who inspired this conversation. I'm not giving any names because I respect confidentiality. Um, but I'll mention, I'll let her know offline that she can watch this and get more value I hope from it. In case you haven't seen my broadcast before, by the way, this is my Facebook Live I do every day at 5 p.m. Pacific time right here on Facebook. Facebook Live on Facebook, that makes sense. Um, you can watch me live at facebook.com forward slash Barry Selby at 5 p.m. Pacific time every day, seven days a week. Um, Pacific time, that was, I think I said that. If you want to watch me live, somewhere in this broadcast should be uh, three dots you can tap on and you can see inside that little pop-up should be, a, uh, be notified when I go live. Do it that way. The replays you can watch on my business page on Facebook, which is barryselby.author, and also my YouTube channel. Sorry, like my business page. My YouTube channel is Barry Selby, which is youtube.com forward slash user forward slash Barry Selby. Subscribe to my YouTube channel, please. And on there is a message. There's a playlist called Messages from the Masculine, which you can watch there. So thank you, Kat. I appreciate that. I'm glad you like my meditations. And f share them. Don't share them with other people, but share the link to the other people. <laughs> Thank you, Ken. I appreciate the love. Um, and nice to see you, by the way, in my broadcast. So, again, replays are on YouTube, replays are on Facebook, and this is my daily broadcast here on Facebook Live. I thank you for watching. I thank you for being with me. If you have any questions, comments, please put them below. Take me up on my office. The links will be in the comments once I sign off. There'll be three links that you can check out. And uh, I trust you will get value from this. Please take care of yourself, as always. And I'll see you again tomorrow, same time, same channel. Actually, I'll be out on the road, so it will be the same time, same channel, different location. So I'll see you tomorrow. Take care of yourself. I'll see you again soon. Bye.